In this video, let's look at identifying forces and then using those forces to make what's called a free body diagram so that we can analyze what those forces are causing, right? So uh, doing force analysis can, can tell you a whole bunch of really useful stuff. So you can use it to figure out the direction that something's accelerating, even though, you know, in some cases it may be obvious, but in some cases it may not be obvious which way it's accelerating. But if you draw a good free body diagram, you can tell from looking at the diagram which way it's accelerating. And then you can also use it to make predictions about how an object is going to behave in the future. That's where it's really useful. Okay, so uh, there's a few rules first for identifying forces. Okay, so the rules are all forces must have an agent. And an agent is some identifiable cause of the force. So for instance, if you have a ball rolling along the ground, Okay. You kick a ball and it rolls along the ground. There's no force pushing it forward anymore once you've given it the push, right? That's just, it's inertia keeping it going. So if you're thinking, oh, there's got to be some force pushing it, but there's nothing touching it, there's not a force because you can't identify what that force is, right? And more often than not, if you think there's a force because something's moving, but you can't name it, it's probably just inertia, okay? So it's got to be something you can identify. And then the second rule is all forces are either contact forces or long-range forces. Meaning contact forces is something that physically touches it. That's like 99% of the forces you're going to see in this class. And then long range forces are things that act without having to touch. So the only two examples we'll ever deal with, like in these classes, are magnetism and gravity, or electromagnetism, I should say, and gravity. So if you take two magnets, they can exert a force on each other without touching. That's a long range force. Gravity is a long range force. If you jump up in the air, the earth, gravity from the earth pulls you down. Okay, so those are the two rules. So how do I identify forces? So there's four basic steps to identify forces. So the first step is to determine what's in the system versus what's in the environment. Okay? The second step is to draw a picture. And if you have a picture, just draw a circle around what is your system. So the object that you're looking at. The third step is identify by name anywhere that the environment touches your system, right? Those are going to be your contact forces. And then the fourth step is to identify by name any long range forces. So let's look at an example. So here's a car being towed up a hill, right? So say like that. So there's a rope right there and there's a really terrible car and there's a hill and there's something pulling this car up the hill. Okay. So let's identify the forces. So first step, determine system versus environment. So this car is my system. Everything else, the rope, the ground, all that, that's the environment. Second step, draw a picture, draw a circle around your system. Okay, so I've gotten a picture, and I'm going to draw a circle around my system. So this is my system, just the car. Third step, identify by name anywhere the environment touches my system. So right here, there's a rope touching my system, right? So... I'm going to say that it was a different color. Here's the rope. And then see here, the ground is touching my system, right? That ground is touching the wheels of the car. So I'm going to say the ground is pushing up. And I'm drawing arrows to kind of show which way they're going. And then fourth step, identify by name any long-range forces. So the long-range forces... In this class, it will always be gravity. We're not going to deal with any electromagnetic forces right, in mechanics, so we're only dealing with gravity. So I'm just going to draw gravity pointing down. That's a long-range force. Okay, so before we can start drawing free-body diagrams, let's identify some common forces so that we can write things. Instead of like writing a name for every force, we can pick from a set of common ones. Okay. So some of the really common ones, the first one is FG, the gravitational force. So anytime you're doing something on Earth, right, there's always going to be a gravitational force. And so you can either write it as FG, but FG is the weight, right? That's another name for this gravitational force. It's the weight, right? That's different from the mass. So the weight, you can rewrite as mass times G, because on Earth, if you multiply the mass times the gravitational field constant, which is 9.8 newtons per kilogram, you'll get the weight, right? So you can either write it as FG or you can write it as MG because you'll use that in an equation. Normal force is surfaces pushing on things, right? So if you have, like in this case, the car 
the ground is pushing on the car, that's a normal force. And the reason it's called normal is because the word normal means perpendicular. So normal forces are always perpendicular to the surface, right? So anytime you have a surface touching, that's a normal force. Frictional force is when you have uh, two objects sliding across each other, right? So friction usually, more often than not, opposes the direction of motion. Uh, tension is ropes, chains, strings, things like that. So tension, ropes can only pull, ropes don't push, right? So tension will always be directed in the direction of the rope away from the object, right? It's impossible to push with a rope, right? So in this case, here's my rope. So the rope is going to, the tension force is going to be pulling that way. And then FS is a spring or an elastic force. We're going to get into spring forces later. Okay, so let's draw a free body diagram of our car that we identified all the forces on. So to draw a free body diagram, first you draw a dot, and that dot represents your system, okay? So now what you're going to do is you're going to draw every force you identified originating from the dot, and you're going to draw it as a vector, right? Because these are forces. Forces have magnitude and direction. So that's going to be a vector that originates on this dot. And so I'm going to label them. Instead of calling it these things, I'll call it one of these forces or you know, if it's a push or something, F sub something. So that when I go make an equation, everything is right there and it's easy to stick into an equation. So start with gravity. Gravity is always going to be there unless you're doing something not on Earth, which is not very common for introductory physics class. So I'm going to draw an arrow pointing down to represent the force of gravity, and I'm going to label it Mg because I could call it Fg, but the same thing as Mg, right? Mass times gravity. Then I'm going to draw the ground. So the ground is a normal force because it's a surface. And so see the surface is kind of tilted, so it's pushing perpendicular to the surface. So I'm going to draw it that same way. The mistake a lot of people make is they draw the normal force always opposite gravity. That's not the case. Normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. And the fact that it does that is why things roll down ramps, right? And we'll look at that in another video. So I'll label this Fn for the normal force. And then I've got my rope right here pulling up, right? And tension forces only pull. So I'll draw that right there, and I'll call it F sub T for tension. So now after watching this, you should be able to identify forces based on those rules that we had it before, right? So um, forces have to have an agent, and forces have to be either contact or long range. And then when you're identifying forces, follow those steps, right? So determine what's in your system, what's in the environment, right? And then you draw a circle around your system and then you draw the forces that are contacting it that you identify by name right you can't say oh i think there's something acting it's got to be something you can name and then you identify the long range forces and then you can draw a free body diagram right and so as you do this it'll get easier and easier you can just start with a free body diagram and identify forces right but at first when you're learning it helps to draw the system and then draw everything okay so let me show you one last thing where drawing a free body diagram really comes in handy okay so we've got two examples one is a ball at rest and one is a ball that's rolling at a constant velocity okay so this is something where people may be tempted to think that there's something else but if you draw a free body diagram you can see that they're the same thing so i'll draw a free body diagram for the ball at rest i have gravity pointing down so i'll call mg and I have the ground, right? The ball sitting on the ground, so the ground's pushing back up. That's applying a normal force. So there's my diagram for the ball at rest. Ball rolling at a constant velocity. Again, there's gravity pointing down. And there's also the ground pushing back up on it, right? So there's a normal force also. Okay, in this case, this is one of those examples where, like we were talking about before, you have to be able to identify the force. If you can't name the force that's making it, or that's acting on it, that's not a force. So in this case, a lot of people when they're starting out think, oh, there's a force pushing it forward, right? The ball's rolling, there's got to be a force pushing it. So what else is touching a ball? Like roll a ball along your floor. What else is touching the ball when it's rolling? There's nothing. You gave it a push maybe over here, right? So maybe my foot is over here and I kicked the ball over here, right? But when the ball's rolling over here, my foot's no longer touching it. That's not a force that's on it, right? So if you're saying, oh, it's the force of the push or the force of this, if it's not touching it and you have trouble naming it, that's not a force. So in this case, the free body diagram for the ball rolling at a constant velocity is the same thing as the ball that's at rest. And the key is, if you think about it, in both of these cases, the acceleration equals zero. This one is a ball at rest, no acceleration, right? This one's a ball rolling at a constant velocity, magic words, right? Constant velocity, no acceleration. So in both of these cases, it's the same thing. And you can tell that a lot easier by drawing a free body diagram.